Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. You may be completely new to art, or you're just looking to move from traditional art into digital art, and you probably have some questions. This video is here to help. So first of all, why would you want to create digital art in the first place? What are the advantages? Well, for one thing, once you become comfortable creating digital art, it tends to be a lot faster and more efficient than traditional work. You also have unlimited access to art supplies, if you will. The only limit you have is your storage space and you have unlimited access to colors, any color that you can think of, no limit to pigments or what paints are available. Digital art is typically created with layers, and layers are an extremely useful tool. They allow you to stack portions of your image over top of one another and rearrange them however you'd like. They also sometimes can modify or affect the layers that are underneath them. Think of layers like cells or panes of glass that are completely transparent except for what you draw or put on them. And perhaps one of the biggest advantages to digital art is the undo key. It is powerful, so use it wisely. As far as disadvantages with digital art, a lot of them have to do with the physicality of things. So it should go without saying that once you're done with a piece, you don't have a physical drawing or painting to hold on to unless you print it out or have it printed. And also it can be obtuse too. Uh, if you're used to traditional mediums, there isn't so much the same tactile sensation and there's a lot of things to get used to and sort of a learning curve when you're using new digital tools. To make digital art, you need two things, an input device and software. And what you choose largely depends on what you already have, how serious you are, how much you're willing to spend, and what best suits your needs. If you're intending to use your finger or a mouse as your input device, I would highly recommend rethinking that completely. Uh, instead, the best results are going to come from you using a pressure-sensitive stylus or tablet. Now you can hunt around for some kind of generic Chinese, uh, cheaply manufactured tablets like this. Your mileage may vary. The quality of those are not so great all the time or it goes up and down. Uh, but as far as a, a pedigree or trusted brand, uh, Wacom, Cintiqs, and Intuos tablets are the ones that have kind of stood the test of time. You can't really go wrong with those. The Intuos tablets that they make are simply pen tablets, uh, pressure sensitive stylus tablets. And then their Cintiqs allow you to draw directly on the screen. The cheaper Wacom tablets started around the $80 mark and go up from there. I've used a number of their products in the past, including a Cintiq display for a number of years. However, currently I'm happiest with the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro. Reason being that the Apple Pencil is the best stylus I've ever used. The software that's available for it is great, which I'll get to in a little bit. And also the portability is a huge factor for me. The key thing that you're looking for with a stylus or tablet is pressure sensitivity, which means that the amount of force you apply to the surface you're drawing on will be translated into the art. So just like the Jedi, you're looking for something that's sensitive to force. Now, if that doesn't sound very important, here's a line drawn with a pressure sensitive stylus, and here's one drawn with a mouse. There are a few styluses apart from the Apple Pencil that are available and advertised as being pressure sensitive uh, for iOS and Android. There aren't any that I can really recommend though. And I'll say the same about the Microsoft brand of products, the Surface Pro, the Surface Book. Uh, I've just seen a lot of people really unhappy drawing on those things and the quality just isn't there. The software that you plan on using is usually dependent on what you plan to use it on. So for PC and Mac, Adobe Photoshop is the most popular choice, followed closely by Clip or Manga Studio, same software, two different names for it. Another few contenders are Autodesk Sketchbook, Paint Tool Sci, and Affinity Designer, to name a few. Photoshop has probably the best versatility overall. It's got an array of text and vector tools along with the traditional drawing and painting tools and effects. Manga Studio and Clip Studio are going to be primarily focused on comic making and line art, and then more lightweight programs like Autodesk Sketchbook have helpful things like ellipses and guides as you're drawing. The app that I use and prefer as a professional using it every day is Procreate on the iPad Pro. It has all the painting and drawing capability that my previous favorite Photoshop had. It's extremely ergonomic and streamlined in its design. It automatically records a video time-lapse of the art that you're making, and in my experience, I have never lost work because the app crashed. It always saves and recovers right where you left off. Plus, the entire experience is portable. 
There are a few things that Procreate can't do, and for that I just export as a Photoshop document and bring it into Photoshop for things like text and vector tools. Now what you choose is completely up to you, however I will recommend, even if you're just starting out, don't purposefully skimp on the right tools. In other words, don't just choose something because it's free. Now I can already see the comments coming in, I completely understand not having money, I've been there myself, but there's a huge difference between the cheapest tool and the right tool. So if you're serious about making digital art, if you have the circumstances to save for a little while, maybe put off the purchase of a few video games and invest in yourself, it makes a difference. Now no matter what software or input device you choose, there's a few universal things that can help you. So here are six pro tips for making digital art. If you have control over the resolution of your image, make sure that the resolution, the DPI or PPI, which stands for dots per inch or pixels per inch, whatever your app calls the level of detail in your image, is at least 300 pixels per inch or so, depending on your purposes. So sometimes these are set at a default of 72 DPI, which it works for images online, but it's way too tiny to print or use anywhere else. I tend to work at double that at 600 DPI, but the files are bigger and your machine needs to be able to handle that. So as a rule of thumb, an eight and a half inch by 11 inch document, like a standard piece of paper at 300 DPI will work out to be 2,550 pixels by 3,300 pixels. Second thing, now that you have access to layers, make sure that you use them. For example, you can draw line art like you would for a comic and then go back and color in underneath. If you sketch something out with pencil and want to ink over top, start a new layer. Now layers are usually transparent, but be careful, because at times the first layer is actually white, as if it was already filled in with white paint, not transparent. And this is especially the case in Photoshop. Number three, like I said, digital art gives you access to literally every color. Now you may be tempted to get a few rainbow color drawings out of your system at first, but after that it's important that you know how to make good color decisions. Now if you haven't seen it already, my video about color goes into detail on how to use vibrant colors in good taste and not make them look garish. Generally you want any colors that you choose in the ultra saturated and bright range of your chosen app's color picker, like sugar or salt. If you use too much, it's going to be overwhelming. Number four. Some of the most helpful tools found pretty universally throughout digital art programs are ones made for selection. Now, whether you want to trace an area with a lasso or click out some straight lines or drag out a rectangle or a circle, selecting isolates an area of the layer that you're working on. You can then delete, move around, copy, draw in only that area, or transform the selection. You can also use selection in your art as well, like to create a hard edge on one side while you use a soft brush on the other. Number five, one thing that helps out a ton in digital art is locking transparency. Now, what does that mean? Well, remember that our layers are all transparent to begin with, and then we're adding on to them with our drawing. But most apps have an option to then lock what you've made on that layer. Now I could draw all over the screen, but it will only affect what's already there. This is great for keeping the same shape or silhouette. In Photoshop, and I believe in most other apps, you can even nest layers over top of others by holding the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and clicking this little line between layers. That's in Photoshop specifically. When you do that, all layers above are beholden to the shape and opacity of the layer beneath. Now, finally, number six, the kinds of layers that we've been talking about are all normal layers. When you stack them on top of each other, they cover what's underneath them completely but you can do a lot more by playing with the opacity of your layer and by playing around with various blend modes. Making your layer a multiply layer, for example, means everything on the top layer will make the ones underneath it darker. Overlay layers tend to play with the contrast, making light things lighter and dark things darker. A lot of blend modes are helpful for adding light and shadow to your image as well. I hope that these things have been useful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in a comment below this video and I'll try my best to get back to you. 
I'm making new videos every week on Character Design Forge, and I'm earnestly trying to turn that into two videos a week. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos are made available. My username is Bagel Venison across Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. And if you're interested in getting some cool stuff in return for supporting this channel, including a personalized video critique of your artwork from me, you can go to patreon.com slash bageldenizen and find out more about that. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating!